One of the areas that I have real concern about just because I hear about it so often and it wasn't an issue when I was growing up is a lot of young guys in particular approach me because they're, based on the questions I'm getting, they're, they're watching a lot of really intense pornography. And that has, we know, there are studies now going on at Stanford and elsewhere. You know, pornography it creates a strong dopamine rush. These are very primitive pathways that in some ways can overwhelm the dopamine system. And then, you know, another thing is happening. So a lot of young guys are getting all this arousal from watching other people have sex. And then they're in the real world scenario and it's like, wait, you're no longer third personing this. You're in, you're actually in this scene <laughs> and they, and it's completely collapsing them. And so I'm not one of these anti-porn people. I, you know, I, I'm not here to judge. I'm just a scientist. I'm reporting the, I always say I'm, I'm not a doctor. I don't prescribe things. I'm a professor. So I profess things. You can decide what you want to do with it or not. But if you, once you understand dopamine, that all makes perfect sense. They're getting this enormous dopamine release from something that is external to them and real life you know, may not mimic the intensity of the combination of variables, right? Mm -hmm. Or people are exercising for a little while and it's all exciting to them and they're, and they're you know, taking tons and tons of pharmacology to do it and then they kind of lose motivation. Well, it, remember, non-infinite yet renewable resource. We have to take a step back and now knowing what we know about testosterone and dopamine and all these things and, and ask, you know, what, it, what is pornography doing to the brain? Well, first of all, it's triggering the release of dopamine and in the short term testosterone by the observation of sex not actually engaging in human contact so think about the young brain being significantly more plastic and willing to rewire than the adult brain mm -hmm. absolutely there's no question about it it's hyperplastic yeah and of course it can wire rewire again but you think about somebody who engages in a lot of um porn watching, right? Watching porn. And that person is getting dopamine and testosterone increases by observing sex and not actually by engaging in human contact. Okay. So that's concerning, right? And there, and obviously that um, people vary, but it should come as no surprise that a lot of these people have trouble with um, romantic interactions when they do happen. Right? because they, their brain isn't conditioned to respond to those, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And there's variation there, I'm sure. And, and these are private matters, so there aren't good data because there aren't laboratory experiments that you could do on this sort of thing that uh, someone will probably do those experiments eventually. But, but also dopamine seeking is what triggers the increase in testosterone. But as we just talked about it with repeated dopamine seeking or triggering of dopamine release, it starts getting diminished, diminished, diminished. So pretty soon that behavior is not causing the release of testosterone. Now people are just doing it compulsively to try and get some little droplet of dopamine out of their out of their brain. I personally think that porn and the availability of porn is is a real is a real detriment to the developing brain, especially to the developing brain. Yeah. Now, it sounds like you rescued the behavior. Um, yeah. and it takes some discipline, right? I imagine, and it it's one of those things that um, it's also anxiety-less compared to dating and relationships where people are vulnerable on both sides and have to negotiate things like, you know, consent and timing and, you know, and communication and all the things that are really hard to do, but are essential to do. That's, that's key. So I think, uh, pornography is a serious issue.